I've been going through all of my milling cutters. I'm getting ready to do a uh, complete organization of them in the uh, cabinet over here behind me. And I knew that some of them are going to need a good cleaning and a de-rusting. So I've got some of these separated here that we're going to start our first batch with. And we're going to soak them in the evapor rust. This stuff right here. Got that in my container over there. And we're going to do an, uh, a full day soak. I'll do, I'll do an overnight soak. And it should remove all of the rust off of these milling cutters. And it always works really well. I've done a few batches in the past. And certain grades of high-speed steel, like the, like these type of cutters right here, they just look absolutely beautiful whenever they're done. It leaves the shiny ground finish on the high-speed steel, and then these areas in there that's got like the oxide on there, it still has that coloring. But a lot of these just have a little bit of rust that's accumulated on, on them over the years. Some of them have quite a bit of rust that uh, need taken off. So this whole stack right here that I plan on soaking, you can see that's very rusty. That one's got a lot of rust on it. This whole stack. All good milling cutters. There's nothing wrong with them. They just I want to get them cleaned up and get them looking good again. All right, so this whole stack right here. And then even I've got a couple of these Morse, the Morse brand slitting saws. And look how bad this one rusted in, in here. Look at that. So we'll see how that looks whenever we get that out of the evapor rust. And I'll probably just, I'm going to take this cardboard out, but I'll, I love these original boxes. So all the ones that I have in the boxes, I always leave them in there just because, you know, they don't make them like that anymore. You don't see them. You can't buy cutters in a nice looking cardboard box anymore. So that's what we're going to do. We'll go ahead and uh, drop them in the tank there or my, my tub and uh, we'll let them sit for a whole day, come out here tomorrow and then we'll do a clean and uh, coat them down. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. All right, I'm still using the same batch that you saw me use last time. I've got a couple of the tools that I've de-rusted since then that I've uh, been running into, but the solution is still good, so we're gonna continue to use it. And after this batch, I'm even gonna strain it. Uh, you can use some coffee filters and strain this stuff through there and it helps take away a lot of the sediment and the rust that's in there. And you can continue to use it a little bit longer there. So let's go ahead and, and get them in there. I'm going to try to stack them in in order to where everything will fit. And we'll start with the big one there at the bottom. This is the biggest saw blade that I have there, used as like a slitting saw. It looks like it just, just fits in there. Actually, it don't just fit in there. It's kind of tight at the bottom and it won't sit all the way flat. So tell you what so instead of putting it in there first we'll go ahead and I'll stack some in the bottom and then I'll put this on top of them how about we do that that one's nice and rusty there that's one that had the peel coat still attached to it a lot of it had pulled off and I went ahead and removed all of it and you can see it still had a lot of it had a lot of rust underneath the peel coat there so that's a new or either reground cutter that's never been used this is a couple of angular cutters there and they're in good shape but there's still a little bit of rust in down inside there so I wanted to just clean them up while we're while we're doing it Looks as though I'm going to have to get into my uh, my uh, second bat, my second gallon of evapor rust to kind of fill this back up some more after we put these in there. I've got some spacing in here, so what I'm going to do is find some more tools, some small ones that will fit down in these gaps and help bring the the level up a little bit, so that we can stack the rest of these large ones in there. This is another big batch of mills that need to get cleaned just the same. These are shell mills. We'll put a couple of these down in there to fill up these little smaller voids. And 
go ahead and put that one in there. Let me go ahead and get the other gallon and we'll just go ahead and fill that up some more. I think while we got, we got a little pocket right there, might be able to fit a couple more of these small shell mills in here. See them little guys there? Now, we'll do an overnight soak. I'll probably come back out in the morning and go ahead and pull them, pull some of them out, see how they look. And if they do, then we'll go from there. We'll get them a good scrub down, uh, cleaning, and then uh, um, we'll, we'll put a rust inhibitor on them to keep them from, from rusting again. All right. All right, guys, this is the next day. And it's been about 20 hours that the uh, tools have been soaking in the evapor rust. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, I did add some uh, extras after you... After I cut the video yesterday, just trying to fill up the voids, and uh, I found some other things that could use cleaning too. But so we want to pull these out and take a look at them. But I have no doubt that they're going to be great. It's going to have removed all the rust, and once these things are brushed and cleaned, they're going to look really good. A couple of them do have some breaks in them, but they're still good cutters. pan right here. I'm going to pull them out of there, put them in this pan, and then I'm going to take them outside. I'm going to give them a scrub down. That's one of the moon cutters there. See, they just need a good cleaning. You can see how it just, you just rub the, the rust right on off of there. So these were some of the other tools that I put in there, and I really love these things. These are some brown and sharp end mill adapters so you have the inch and a quarter shank right here so on your milling machine you you can keep your inch and a quarter end mill holder in the spindle or a collet and you can just take these in and out to adapt to different size end mill shanks that was one of the big boys that needed cleaned off right there that was another one of the big boys that had a lot of rust on it there's some of those small Shell mills we dropped in there. There was that big saw blade. Looks brand new. Once you once you scrub it, it's gonna look just like a new one. Getting ready to clean these, but while we're here, I'm going to go ahead. I've got the rest of these shell mills that I want to go ahead and clean up. So we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and lower all these down in, in here. Here's, this is another one of those cutters that I took the uh, green peel coat off of it. It's a good cutter. It just, just has the surface rust underneath the, the peel coat there. These are some indexable, old school indexable face mills. I'm going to do another 24 hour soak for these guys here and start getting our milling cutters cleaned up. All right, I got you at my little uh, cleaning station outside. So I've got a tub right here that's got some industrial cleaner that's mixed with water. And I keep this over here by the house all the time when I want to clean something. We got our scrub brush right there. Already got a couple of them. So you take the, take the cutters and every single one of them, I, I go ahead and I clean them. So take the scrub brush and just scrub them real good. And that's going to help remove any of the residue of the evapor rust, and also it removes all of the oxides that still, you know, the, the flakiness or the dust that's still kind of stuck to the cutter itself and just cleans them off. And these brushes work real good on these cutters getting down inside of the, uh, the cutting flutes here. All right, and I've already got a couple that I've just scrubbed right there. Just hose them off real good, give them a really good rinse with the water. You see the cutters, they just turn out really good. Now this is that Morse cutter that was very rusted. You, know, you can see the pattern in there from the cardboard, but it's cleaned it up. And I mean, it's gonna be like a new cutter again. And then some of these, 
some of these cutters in there that still had a lot of the, the crud still stuck on there, either cutting oils, fluids, <clears throat> or even the uh, oils from the, uh, the peel coat that might have been on them because there was a few of them like that. So this is a good way to uh, clean them very well and easily. Just get your cleaning fluid like this and your scrub brush. Just give them a good scrub. These brushes are a good way to get down in these lands in between all of the cutting edges. Very, very nice. So that's what I'm going to do here with all these cutters. We're going to take every one of them, give them a good clean and a scrub rinse them off and then we're going to go inside the shop with them all I've got the air on and I'm going to blow dry them and get rid of all the all the moisture and then we'll coat them down with uh, oil to uh, protect them all of our cutters are now scrubbed and cleaned and hosed off so now I'm going to take them all and uh, use my air hose and compressed air and I'm just going to dry them to get rid of all the moisture off of them. Just get them nice and clean, just like that. We got all the cutters dry and clean now, so this is where I put the. Uh, this is where I go and I put a coat of oil on there. In this case, I'm going to use my Sterrett M1 oil. It's also got a rust inhibitor in there, and it dries and leaves a film on the on the on the tools to prevent any kind of moisture on them, and it works really good. So I've got it in my my spray can right here, and it works really good to apply it. So provides a nice dusting on there. I'm just trying to show you the process there. And that Sterrett M1 oil works really good for that. It's, uh, it's like many of them. It's a, it displaces the water, so any of the water or moisture that might be left on this, it'll drive that out of there and protect the metal, create a nice little uh, protective barrier there against moisture. You know, there's, there's several out there that, that work real good. And, Evaporust has their own version of it right there called Rust Block, and it seems to work pretty good too. But I just I prefer to use my oils, such as my Sterrett M1 or WD or something like that. CRC SP350 is another real good one. It's a little heavier and provides a little more waxy film on it for long-term storage. But this is going to work really good. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of them coated down well and start getting them put into the cabinet like we were doing and get the rest of these guys organized. By the way, this is just a, uh, this is a sure shot sprayer right here. It's just labeled for the safety clean. One of my viewers had given me this uh, a while back and uh, we usually use WD-40 in it or my Sterrett M1 oil. I like to do it right here on top of the, all the cutters so that any of the overspray helps get onto the cutters themselves. I wanted to show you guys that second batch of milling cutters. I just finished getting them cleaned off and uh, dried. I still got to oil them. But, so these were the other uh, shell mills that I put into the evapor rust after the uh, first batch that you saw there. And besides getting these things cleaned up to where they're uh, more enjoyable to you know, be able to, to use because they're not rusty, I always like looking at them to see what manufacturer they are. A lot of these old brands are are uh, no longer around and you know a lot of these you just don't see these cutters new anymore except you know for uh, companies that uh, import them 
but like this is that one that that was still new that had the peel coat on it this is this one says national twist drill and tool company detroit usa high speed you know that's just, I, I love looking at the names of these one of these right here it was it was this one it's very hard to read but this this one was made by the cleveland twist drill company it's got the the logo on there you know the the uh, diamond with the c and it says cleveland this is an interesting cutter because this is a radius cutter but this is made like a shell mill so you put this on a on a shell mill arbor so you can end cut with it and you can cut the radius on there and it's sort of an oddball radius it says 1.452 radius this could have been a specialty made cutter for a specific application all right and uh, this one says national uh, rochester michigan i'm not really sure the uh, that company there but it just says national rochester michigan that one i can't read uh, this is uh, pratt and whitney any of the ones that say pnw on there a lot of good old tools brown and sharp uh, this one is another brown and sharp and this one here now what is that I'm... go and go company detroit michigan usa that's a neat logo. I, I gotta say that's the first time that I've seen that. You probably can't see it with the GoPro, but that's a neat little logo right there. Go and go company. Huh. And then we got these two, these are two indexable face mills right here. And these are what you would consider obsolete face mills. Now there's still plenty good if you have the inserts. So this one right here, I could probably uh, locate the inserts pretty easily. These are the square inserts that go on this and I could probably use that. This one right here, I'm not too sure about. This one's missing one of these pieces that go in there, the insert seat. So I don't know what happened with that, but you know, just an obsolete cutter and probably never get used again, but it was still nice to be able to clean it up and see it, see it looking a lot better. But anyway, that's that right there. I'm gonna get these oiled up and uh, get them over in the cabinet. Well, there you have it, guys. There's a nice, easy, and fun way to restore your milling cutters for the shop here. Just get you some of that evaporust and give them a good soak overnight. Scrub them down and then uh, spray them down with some oil. And now I'm going to get started putting these things in the cabinet and get all these things organized. But it's, it's always so enjoyable to take these cutters after they've been sitting around for so long, getting rusty and just real nasty and dirty looking and bringing them back to life and making them look good again. It's uh, way more enjoyable to use these tools when they're cleaned up and ready to go whenever you ready, whenever you need them. All right, so hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on the next video.